Welcome back. News stories about Hurricane George died with the storm itself, but the Caribbean and America's Gulf Coast is still trying to recover. Three News cameraman Jeff Mackley faced the full fury of Hurricane George. He's the only person you'll ever meet whose holiday videos aren't boring. A hurricane brings with it unusual sights in the supermarkets. Can we get some more, honey? Help her carry, will you? Yeah, <laughs> Forget the filming. <laughs> on the streets. Call Kushner and Kushner. And on Miami Beach, where the impending storm inspires curiosity rather than fear. That comes later. Like a scene out of Twister, Jeff Mackley drives north to intercept Hurricane George. A five kilometer long convoy of electrical repair trucks clogged the highway. Bustling New Orleans has become a ghost town. More than a million people have been evacuated. Soldiers patrol the motorway entrance to the city. Another disaster movie metaphor seems appropriate. This freeway behind me is one of the busiest roads into New Orleans. This road is completely closed, as are all other roads around New Orleans, as the hurricane rapidly approaches. By nightfall, Jeff gets his first taste of a hurricane. At Gulfport, outside New Orleans, the storm has begun. Within hours, the winds have reached over 150 kilometres an hour and only cameramen and the foolhardy venture outdoors. OK, Sheldon, um, you went through Hurricane Drew. How bad was that compared to what we're going through right now? Well, Hurricane Andrew was a lot different. Hurricane Andrew was about eight hours of really intense, intense wind. So when we went to sleep at night, it was going crazy. And by the time we woke up in the morning, everything was done. It was all over. But this is supposed to last for another 20 more hours or so like this, and it's already been going for about five or six. A few miles down the road, the eye of the hurricane has hit town. And that's where our intrepid cameraman meets George face to face. His voice is haunting, and he shows no sign of stopping. Well, we're driven downtown at the height of the hurricane and suddenly there was a big, big flash, something had exploded, so I leap out of the car and start filming and right down the street is a tornado. Um, within seconds I'm being showered with all sorts of metal objects and things, the car gets hit. Um, but you're really not thinking, you're not really thinking about anything, it's, uh, your whole world is just a little two inch black and white viewfinder and all that concerns you at the time is to keep the water off the lens and to keep filming and you're just not even thinking about how dangerous it is. By daybreak, Hurricane Georges is still very much alive. It's eight o'clock in the morning, the winds here are gusting to well over 200 kilometres an hour. There's debris in the air, this whole place is under a curfew. As you can see, it's almost my roof in, in the roof of the house. Uh, and that's really the hardest thing was in the aftermath of the hurricane. The whole area was a disaster zone, and you just had a continuous stream of people wanting food and water, and you just had to be really ruthless and give them none. In his brief 18 days of life, Georges travelled 6,000 kilometres, killed 375 people, and affected the lives of tens of millions. Somewhere out beyond the horizon, another hurricane is being born. 